What news stories mattered most this week in the world of media and advertising? Today, we will try to answer that question in 20 minutes or less. I'm Jack Benjamin, reporter for The Media Leader. And I'm Omar Oaks, editor of The Media Leader. And this week, we'll be covering social media's role in ginning up UK riots, earnings from the likes of Meta, Amazon, and WPP, July's box office, and more. But first, Omar, the biggest news to come of the past week must surely be the fact that Google has been ruled a monopoly by a US federal judge and will presumably face some severe sanction to reinstate a competitive marketplace. What did you make of that decision? Well, uh, you know, I thought it was interesting. Um, whenever whenever you mention in conversation, people in the industry that um, you just casually say that Google is a monopoly, they kind of nervously laugh and the eyes start shifting around. Um, but, you know, you, if, it, if, it, if it walks like a monopoly and talks like a monopoly, then it is. And, um, you know, it's good to see that um, that this there is a there is a potential for U.S. laws make laws makers to act, but I you know we've been down this road of antitrust in Google so many times. I'm fairly skeptical about what's gonna um, what's gonna happen next. I mean, you, you tell me, Jack. I mean, what when was it sued? I don't know the background to this. When was it sued? How long was the process? And what has this judge ultimately decided? Yeah, the, I mean, the, the lawsuit is it's interesting. You say that. We, don't know what's going to happen next and uh, we can talk about that as well but yeah the lawsuit's been going on for over a year and uh, you know recall one of the key bits that came out of it was that google was paying apple 20 billion dollars a year to ensure that google search was the default search engine on safari uh, i'm sure that weighed on the decision making of the judge is u.s district judge amit meta he said quote after carefully considering and weighing the witness testimony and the evidence the court reaches the following conclusion google's a monopolist and it has acted as one to maintain its monopoly so, you know, sort of just saying not only as as you mentioned, people around the industry might say that Google's a, a monopoly, but that um, it's acting as a monopoly actively to crowd out other potential competitors. Um, so worth noting that Kent Walker, Google's president of global affairs, already said that Google's going to be appealing this. So I would expect this to be you know locked up in courts for quite some time. Google has argued that, you know, it, it's does so well because it has the best search product. Um, and I'm not sure if you buy that argument, but um, clearly this judge did not buy the argument that Google is only doing well because it's a really good product. Well, they would say that, wouldn't they? I mean, the whole point about antitrust is that, is it that Google has built such a great superior search business um, or is it that it's put up walls all over the industry and doing deals with companies like you mentioned, Apple, um, making Google the, the default search option within the Safari web browser on iPhone? It's probably a combination of both, isn't it? Um, the whole point about antitrust is to make the marketplace more stronger by allowing competition to thrive. The real question for me is whether search is a natural monopoly. And if 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 left to its own devices, it's always going to tend this way. Mm. Um, people like Ian Whitaker, they, they like to compare Google's current dominance to uh, the yellow pages. Ian Whitaker, the, the, the media analyst, um, he, he suspects that um, Google's argument that it would lose 60 to 80% of searches on iPhones if iPads, um, if it was not the default browser on those devices, they think it's, he thinks it's exaggerated. Um, I, I don't know. I, I went through a phase of using DuckDuckGo. I don't know if you ever I, tried yeah. that. I, I used <laughs> DuckDuckGo actually. Yeah, uh, you still used to, and I, I just, yeah. I don't know. I, I, th I felt a bit sad using it. I felt like it just wasn't as effective um, as Google was. So I, I do have a lot of sympathy with Google's argument. But at the end of the day, this is a U.S. public company. It's, it's, it, ha it has a fiduciary responsibility to make as much money as it can for its shareholders, and you would expect it to aggressively fight this. Yeah, and and so they they will, um, and it's not clear as well what the potential. Uh, repercussions are anyway um the judge did make a ruling a sentencing essentially of uh what what might happen there's been speculation around maybe google gets broken up because uh, of its monopoly status or maybe it just gets fined but as you mentioned so previously the issue with fines is that they often kind of amount to speeding tickets relative to the just sheer amount of money that big tech companies can can make in a, in a given quarter or year so it's a it's a challenging one and, and we're not really sure um you, you mentioned ian whitaker uh, another media analyst i i spoke to alex de said it was very unlikely that google was going to be broken up 
He said, quote, courts would be reluctant to sanction such a groundbreaking penalty and there would have to be international regulatory approval, which is too complicated. There's too many potential unintended consequences. And, and of course, with the appeals process going forward, we probably won't get a verdict on this for, for some time. So we will sort of have to wait and see a little bit. Your Your point about the fact that, you know, search might be a natural monopoly is interesting to me because I feel like most people just want a search experience that's as easy as possible. I don't think Google's search product is like particularly great relative to a lot of its competitors at this point. And that's partially because the user experience is filled with loads of advertisements on Google. There, and, and SEO often makes search results not that great uh, because all these different you know web pages just throw in a bunch of keywords and to get on the top of the page and then those articles actually suck and they don't really tell you what you what you want to know um so i think for most people they just would just use the default search experience on whatever their browser is and so if that's not google then hey you know that could be uh that could be reason for for competitors to be able to step up i don't know and it's worth noting of <laughs> course that ai search is is also coming open ai is developing search gpt um perplexity has its own competitor so search is changing anyway um i would i would expect it to be a little bit more competitive going forward regardless of this antitrust case well i hope what comes out of this is whether or not it fundamentally changes google's business we have to make search better we have to make it work for incentivizing for encouraging more development of quality media um because if we don't it's just going to be a worse experience for everyone Mm. On the topic of quality media, there's been a, a lot of uproar this week um, amid rioting around the UK about social media and the you know, perhaps lack of quality uh, on, of social media and its ability to spread misinformation, uh, messages inciting violence. This has been particularly true of the platform X. Um, Kara Starmer, um, in response to the riots um, out of Southport and then around the country, said, quote, let me also say to large social media companies and those who run them, violent disorder was clearly whipped up online. That is also a crime. It is happening on your premises, and the law must be upheld everywhere. And there's been a back and forth, essentially, between the UK government and ex-owner and our, our absolute favorite, Elon Musk, who um, has said things like, quote, civil war is inevitable in the UK. I'm curious, you know, as an American... Uh, I don't know necessarily all the speech laws and how they're different in the UK versus in the US. I probably should know this by now. But tell me, is Musk or X like actually legally liable for a lot of what's going on around the country in terms of spreading misinformation, allowing people on the platform that are inciting violence? Like under the new Media Act, could X be sued? for a lot of money over this well it's difficult because um the laws in the uk are not too dissimilar from what has been the law in the us for quite a long time now where um a platform a a user generated content platform owner doesn't have ultimate liability over the content that's produced by people on that platform so if i go on twitter and i just decide to libel someone as a lot of people do, uh, um, it's it's not the platform owner's ultimate responsibility. Um, once, but there has to be moderation procedures in place. So once it's flagged, then the platform owner has a responsibility to respond to the complaint. And if it's not seen to be doing that responsibly, then um, then then it does become liable. This is why over the years we've heard you know TikTok as the newest. Uh, big social media company come on the scene where it's been very keen to talk about its content moderation procedures and has had actually relative to other social media quite a compelling story to tell um this this is material um to the business of social media um this is why when elon musk came in after overpaying massively 44 billion dollars to buy twitter one of the first thing he did was Um, decimate, almost get rid of entirely the brand safety team, um, product moderation. And as we might get into, this is what's causing so many of the problems ever since. Um, If you're going to be a responsible owner of social media, this is, these are table stakes and to not take it seriously is just bad business. Well, yeah, it is bad business. A lot of advertisers have left the platform. And um, also just this past week, uh, Twitter itself sued 
the World Federation of Advertisers as well as Garm over what it says is a ad boycott. Um, Linda Yaccarino sent out a video on X uh, explaining uh, their argument. Today, we filed an antitrust lawsuit against the Global Alliance for Responsible Media, four of its key members, and the World Federation of Advertisers. These organizations targeted our company and you, our users. The evidence and facts are on our side. They conspire to boycott X, which threatens our ability to thrive in the future. That puts your global town square, the one place that you can express yourself freely and openly at long-term risk. But I don't know about you, Omar, but I think that it's a bit laughable to suggest that in a free market, when people you know can choose to advertise wherever they want, choosing not to advertise on a platform that clearly is not good at um, you know containing hateful speech, um, intentionally so, intentionally fanning, fanning flames, at least in terms of the actions of Elon Musk, um, doesn't seem like a really great place for brands. And there's probably not a lot of great ROI. Like there's not necessarily a good business case for being on X slash Twitter, and it sounds like there really never has been based on our prior conversations. So, I mean, this lawsuit uh, is, is to me, it was just a bit laughable to see. Well, I, I, I don't know whether to, to laugh or kind of feel quite sad on watching that video because, you know, um, it, it has remnants of being a hostage video somewhat. <laughs> um, but in, in terms of, um, you know, LOL moments, um, you know, she, she points at the camera and she said, this is your uh, town square. And it's not. It's just patently not the idea that Twitter is the town square is ridiculous. It's a user it's a user generated platform where it has an algorithm which um like which promotes content that goes viral. And let's be honest, um the most engaging content on that platform is designed to whip up hate um uh, arguments it's a it's it's a nasty nasty user experience for the vast majority of people and he you know it 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 would be difficult for for a benign owner to to make that platform brand safe but he's come in and as we've already said um he's completely damaged um the functional ability for it to become more brand safe and he's been he's been consistent in his stridency of of saying that you know when he told advertisers to go f themselves when he came to can and this kind of I, I just don't understand how someone like Mark Reed, the CEO of WPP, would would platform someone like that. And you know, I'm a, I, as a journalist, I'm a you know, I believe in free speech as much as possible. I believe in talking to anyone, but if you're going to talk to someone like that, ask them some tough questions. And it was a sad day for this industry when he failed to do that. I would have loved to have um, interviewed Elon Musk. Um, still, still waiting, Elon, um, if if you want to do that. Um, but you know. Who, who am I? If only I was rich enough to sue people for not reading my work or for to sue advertisers for not advertising with the media leader. Right. I mean, it, it, is, a, it is a ridiculous argument. It's worth noting that the sort of the town square argument uh, is definitely hollow um, when speech for, you know, that, that Musk or Yaccarino who, or whomever is in charge, that when speech that they don't like is put out there, they then, you know, take uh, procedures in order to tamp down on that speech as well. So, you know, think think of the um, white dudes for Harris account that got like throttled. People couldn't follow that account because it's pro Kamala Harris and Musk is has come out very fervently in, in favor of Donald Trump for, for U.S. president. You're right to say that it, it's sad. Um, I think it is funny in some ways to, to, you know, you can make fun of it, but it is also really serious and, and something that we need to keep an eye on. Um, there were a, a number of additional companies that reported earnings in the past week that occurred after we released our last podcast. You mentioned WPP. They were one of those companies. Um, they reported earnings and like for like revenue was down 0.5%, including a decline of 5.3% in the UK. There were some other big companies that, that reported Amazon, for example, showed robust but below expectations growth in its high margin ads business of 20%. Um, on Snap's earning call, investors were a bit spooked, it sounded like, by what the social media company described as volatility in brand advertising ad spend. On the other hand, we did get earnings from Meta, 
which has emerged as a clear market leader. I want to talk about them because um, apart from Google, it's clear that they're really growing business well. I mean, what did you what did you take away from Meta's earnings this quarter, Omar? Um, just thought um, user growth continues to be um, good in terms of daily active users. It's huge. Um, I'm really interested in, there's been chatter for a while about um, Meta taking a stake in, I'm, I'm going to mispronounce it, Luxotica, um, the company that owns Ray-Ban and other brands. Um, Ray-Ban, of course, um, manufacture these these Facebook, these Meta glasses, these VR glasses. Um, and it's fascinating. You know, it, it seems like the, the Metaverse has been dead for a lot of people as a concept um, in media. But when you compare it to the hype over the Apple Vision Pro, their headset, I we've talked about this before on the podcast. I just can't get over the fact that you just look really stupid when you wear this thing. <laughs> and if you can create some kind of chic looking Ray-Ban glasses, you can get the tech right. And to, to, to have the best of both worlds, you can have this amazing um, user experience using VR, AR, but you put it in a device that people actually want to wear, then it seems that Meta is really onto the right strategy, even with the metaverse now. They're just, they just seem to be really killing it. And, you know, they've, they've had their issues in the past, you know, we've just been talking, we've just been talking about X and brand safety and, you know, let's go through the archives and look at, yeah, look yeah, at Facebook yeah. and Instagram. Right. Um, but you know, you, you, you give them credit where it's due. Um, it's really exciting. Um, that could really open up a whole new world for the future of media. And so if they get it right and this investment, if it does happen in, in Ray-Ban could be just the start of it, not the start of it, but um, a major step forward. Yeah. It's clear they have a strong AI story to tell, and that's mostly just been making it easier for advertisers to spend money on their various platforms. Um, but AI is also contributing to the usefulness of these glasses. Um, so, you know, not only can glasses surely can take a picture, but you can also just sort of talk to the AI that's on your face. And I think that's, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if I would personally ever use that, but I could see the sort of beginnings of use cases where you don't need to have your phone with you all the time in order to, you know, have, you know, ask basic queries about things to, to essentially have a search experience through AI and then also to take some pictures and recordings. And they, yeah, they do look pretty stylish. So um, there was no uh, extra news about from, from Mark Zuckerberg about whether or not Meta is going to be taking a stake in uh, Ray-Ban, the Ray-Ban owner. I'm not going to try to pronounce that name either. Um, but uh, it, it's entirely possible, especially, you know, he give them a lot of praise on, on the earnings call. So uh, again, something to, worth monitoring. There were lots more stories this week, and we won't be able to discuss them in as much detail. But Omar, what else should people be aware of? Uh, I've got to do the news thing again. You get, oh you get to do the news oh. thing again. Cue the music. Oh my goodness! I thought I was an editor and I didn't have to do stuff. Mm, okay. Sorry. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm gonna get this right. Okay. So. <laughs> Ta-da. In TV news, Warner Brothers Discovery is said to be mulling selling off smaller assets instead of splitting its TV and film businesses, with executives concerned by years of legal challenges, according to the Financial Times. In publishing news, Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich was finally returned home to the US after a multi-party prisoner swap. Um, a reporter for Bloomberg, which broke the story up before Gershkovich was safely back in US hands, has been sacked. Social media news, uh, the US Department of Justice has sued TikTok, alleging the short form video platform illegally gathered the personal information of under 13 users without their parents' permission. Um, and finally, in cinema news, July was the biggest month for box office, the box office so far this year, earning over 103 million pounds. Big winners included animated film, Despicable Me 4, Marvel superhero flick, Deadpool and Wolverine, and the indie darling, Long Leg. Thanks, um, Omar. You totally when, killed it. Uh, uh, killed it, literally, maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, oh, it's, it's intense doing that. Um, and now I want to ask, I want to talk more about it. Did you Have you seen Deadpool and Wolverine? No, I haven't. You, you saw it, though, right? Did you like I it? I did. Th thank you to Disney, by the way, for um, we, we had a lovely private screening this this is what i do nowadays I, I you know i'm part of the illuminati um but no that um that's a big that's a big media story as well marvel kind of getting rid of you know the multiverse and that kind of um what had become a bit of a ridiculous story arc and they're kind of going back to basics and 
Deadpool Wolverine as well as just being really funny. It was it was a really well made film. Um, it it kind of has set up this new kind of back to basics phase for Marvel and Disney and Robert Downey Jr. coming back to do Avengers movies as well. Yeah, um, I, I don't exciting. know how I feel about that. I don't know how I, I feel like that. That to me that was a uh, evidence that they're out of ideas and. They just think, well, we can throw Robert Downey Jr. at it and that'll print tickets. And maybe that's true, but that's not like an artistic development. That's kind of, I don't know. It seemed a bit, maybe I'm just cynical about it. Um, we'll see Disney's earnings actually come out uh, soon after we are recording this podcast. So uh, be on the lookout on themediolator.com for, for coverage on how they did and uh, how they're going to be doing. And especially in that Marvel segment, as I mentioned, big money maker potentially, if they can get it right. But that's all the time that we have. Uh, So thanks for listening and uh, we'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to the Media Leader podcast. You can find and listen to all our episodes on our website at themedialeader.co.uk or wherever you get your podcasts. But just remember, please do subscribe to be notified when we release our next episode. From all of us at the Media Leader, I'm editor Omar Oaks. Our executive producer is Jack Benjamin. See you next time.